God, thank you that you have extended your mercy that is more to us whose sins are many and where our sin is plentiful, your grace abounds. God, as we turn our attention now to the Lord's table, I praise you that this uh, ordinance that you've established for us is not based on our merit, but on Christ's uh, death and resurrection on our behalf alone, that despite what kind of sin uh, we committed this week, God, that those of us who are trusting in you, who hope in you, God, we can approach this ordinance with confidence because of what you've done on our behalf. And we pray that we would do that well now. Amen. You can be seated. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we have men on uh, the sides who are going to pass out Bibles. Uh, We'd love for you to have a copy of God's Word. Just raise your hand if you need a copy of God's Word. We want to make sure everybody can see what is preached from the front this morning. And once you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, We looked at this passage recently in our main service, and uh, it also has some sweet truths for us to return to as we take of the Lord's Supper together. What we're going to see here is that our hope was determined by God the Father and secured for us by God the Son. And that's a, those are a couple great truths to reflect on. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, starting in verse 9, as I read through verse 11. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing." Paul has just made clear to the church in Thessalonica that those believers who have died as well as those believers who are still alive when Christ comes to rescue the church will be spared from experiencing the coming wrath of the Lord. And here in verse 9, God tells us why we must confidently fortify ourselves with faith, hope, love regarding Christ's rescue as it's described in the preceding verses at the end of chapter 4. The first reason that we see in verse 9 why we can fortify ourselves in this way with faith, love, and hope is because, first of all, this hope that he's just described was determined for us by God the Father. This hope was determined by God the Father. Do you see that in verse 9? Those first words, God has not destined us for wrath, but for something else, for obtaining salvation. Christians will be saved from God's coming wrath when the Lord avenges himself and vindicates his own name by punishing evildoers on earth. The church will be gone. She will not be here to experience that wrath. The church will escape that wrath, not because we don't sin. This is clear. We won't be rescued from the coming wrath because we're holy enough to merit being rescued. The reason the church will be rescued from that coming wrath is because it was determined by God the Father. Our hope of rescue is certain because of God's gracious determination. He has not destined us for wrath. Notice at the end of verse 9, the means by which this rescue comes. It is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Each word in that phrase is crucial. 
our obtaining salvation from the coming wrath is not through endurance of the wrath, but through rescue from the wrath by a person. And who's the rescuer? He's called Lord. Lord. The Lord, the God, the Messiah, the master, rather, of the church is none other than Jesus. And this Jesus is also called, the last phrase in that, the last word in that phrase, Christ. He's the anointed one, God's anointed one, anticipated and predicted by all the Old Testament prophets, the Savior of mankind who will one day reign on earth. He's Jesus. He is the one who rescues the church from his coming wrath. This hope was determined for us by God the Father, and also this hope was secured for us by God the Son. Look at verse 10. It says that our Lord Jesus Christ died for us for this purpose, so that whether we are awake or asleep, that is, whether we are awake whether we're alive when he comes to rescue or whether we're asleep, whether we've died before he comes to rescue, something will be true of us. We will live together, that is, all of us, whether we're awake or asleep, with him. What a great truth to meditate on as we prepare for the Lord's table. Jesus, one reason at least that Jesus died was to rescue us all together from the coming wrath. Now, if by your own admission, Jesus is not your Lord, your master, if you haven't willingly submitted yourself to the authority of Jesus so that you've become his slave, submissive to God through him, then this ordinance is is not for you yet. And we would ask that as the bread and juice come by that you just refrain from taking because this is for Christians who are hoping in Jesus to partake of, to remember and proclaim his death. And so, believer, as the bread and the juice come by, very simple elements, it's, it represents something amazing is that Jesus sacrifice himself on your behalf under the wrath of God, that you would not see any wrath of God. And so the men are going to come forward. When your heart's prepared, consider those things and then take communion on your own.